How do we connect to a Linux server in AWS? Well, it's pretty simple. It really is pretty simple. But first and foremost, before you even try to connect, you want to make sure that the security group the server belongs to is allowing SSH connection, so port 22. So I'm going to click on my Linux server here, and we're going to scroll down in its description until I find the security group, and then I'm going to click on that security group. So this security group says that we are allowing SSH connections using port 22 from anybody in the entire world over the internet. It's, it's a bad idea, but it works for this demonstration. So for you in the real world, think about what addresses your administrators are going to be using to connect into AWS over the internet. Typically, it's going to be the range of NAT translated addresses. So you're going to put your NAT address range in here for the source. If you're at home right now messing around with AWS, you might want to look up the public IP address of your router and put that in there. That way there you reduce your uh, attack size, your attack vector on the internet. All right, so we know we're allowing SSH connections in this particular case. So let's go back to our instances. We'll go to our Linux server right now and what we do is we grab the DNS name and we put it where? We put that DNS name in our favorite terminal program. In my case, I'm just using PuTTY for this example. You may use a different terminal program. But I'll put the host name in here and make sure that we have port 22 set up using SSH. Now though, we need to indicate what private key from a public private key pair is going to be utilized. Right now, this server has a very specific public key stored on it. And if we scroll down here, you'll see that it says the key pair name is demo key pair that is being utilized. I need to have the private key of demo key pair because the public key is already on the server. Now, why is it already on the server? Because when you create the server, the very last thing it asks you is what key pair do you want to use? If you don't have one, you create one on the spot, which means you will end up downloading the private key to your local machine and the public key gets put on the server. So I have that private key right now stored locally. The problem with the private key though, is that it is a PEM file and PuTTY requires what? PuTTY requires a PPK file, that's right. So if we go back to PuTTY right now, we'll see here in PuTTY that when I go under SSH, expand that out and we click on auth, it asks me for the private key file right here. So I'm gonna click browse and what does it want? It wants a PPK file. Now look, it says jump box. That is not the right PPK file. I need the PPK file that corresponds to demo key pair. So I have a PEM file for demo key pair because that is what AWS creates, PEM files. So if you're using a terminal program that accepts the PEM file, then great, you just put the PEM file in and you move on. However, with PuTTY, you need to convert the PEM file to a PPK. And there is a program that comes with PuTTY for that, and it's called PuTTY Key Generator. So you open up PuTTY Key Generator, you click on Load in this case, you then change to the directory that has your files, in this case it's my downloads folder where my PEM file is, and I change this, drop down to all files, and there's my PEM file. So I'm gonna double click on my PEM file, it imports the PEM file in, I click OK. The next step is to save private key, and that's gonna create a PPK file for me. So I click save private key, it's gonna ask me, do you wanna create a passphrase or not? Well, really it's saying, are you sure you want to save this without a passphrase? Yes, I'm okay with that right now, I don't need one. And now I need to name it. So I'm going to name it the same as my demo file, demo key pair, but I'm going to remove the .pem at the end 
and make sure this is set to PPK. So demo key pair, PPK, click save. I can close this now and there is my PPK file. So that is the file I wanna plug into now, PuTTY. So going back to PuTTY, where were we again? Let me just back up here. We were under auth, so SSH, auth, clicked on browse. Now I can put that PPK file in. I click open and I'm gonna get a security alert. Why? Because it is a self-signed key. So I'm gonna say yes, I'm fine with it. It's then gonna open up my terminal window and the username is ec2-user. I'm gonna hit enter and I'm in. So you're logged in as the root user called ec2-user. Now your Linux administrator can make any adjustments they need to the server now, that they need to. So however they wanna log into it, if they need to upload any new public keys for their own credentials, then they can do that as well. The sky's the limit for them there. Not even the sky's the limit, right? No, What's, there is no limit. Let's go to outer space with this. They can do pretty much anything they need to do because they have root access. So let me close this out though, because I want to show you another way that you can connect. Because agent forwarding might be something you'll use in the future, especially if you're using a Bastion server, or a jump box. What we're going to do is, in this case, we're going to use another program called Pageant. Pageant comes again with PuTTY, but essentially it allows me to pre-populate keys. So here is a Pageant key list that opens up on my computer by opening a Pageant. And if I click Add Key, I can add keys to this list. So I'm going to go ahead and add my demo key pair, PPK, and I'm going to click close. And then when we go to PuTTY now, and we put in the host name, I then go under SSH and expand it. We go under auth. Instead of putting in the actual private key file, I'm going to say allow agent forwarding. So that way there, I am going to use pageant. And so when I click open now, it's going to go to that pageant list and pull the correct key I need to successfully log into the server. And there we go. Log in as ec2-user and I'm now successfully connected. So those are the steps to connect. The difference is gonna come in when you're using a different terminal program. So this was an example using PuTTY, but if you have a different terminal program and it accepts PEM files instead of PPK files, then all you had to do was put in the PEM file, click open, click connect, click whatever the button is, and you're good to go. So it's pretty simple to connect, but uh, if somebody doesn't show you how to connect, then it could be quite difficult. So enjoy your uh, Linux sessions, folks, in AWS.